Well, hello, everybody. It's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you are greatly blessed. Well, before we begin on our daily devotional, what we can learn from the life of Mary, I want to tell you about a coming event that's coming out on the 7th and 8th of May, just in a few days' time. The women's ministry of our ministry is called Heart Ministry for Women, Heart Ministry for Women. And they're hosting an event called A Time with Rosemary. Now, Rosemary is my wife. She has a word on her heart. She's got something on her heart she wants to share that I really believe will bless you wherever you are. And so you can sign up to receive this. You have to sign up to receive it and it will be sent immediately just into your inbox uh, on the 7th or 8th, depending on where you are around the world. Uh, You truly can expect to be surprised and expect the unexpected. Uh, I know Rosemary really feels like God has said something to her that placed on her heart that she wants to share with you. Well, to receive it, you need to go to this address. Just sign up at this address and we'll email it to you in your inbox. And I know you'll be greatly blessed. Well, as we continue with our daily devotional series called uh, Seven Habits We Can Learn from the Life of Mary, The very first habit we talked about was surrender. We didn't talk about just saying, yes, you can do what you want, God, but rather it was a surrender of her head, her heart and her hands, the three H's, head, heart, hands of her life. It was a complete and total surrender. What we also learn about Mary, a second habit or trait that we see in Mary is the incredible strength that she had. And yet she faced some very, very terrible and difficult situations within her life. In the time of Jesus, when if a woman was found to be pregnant and she wasn't married, that could be that that could be punished by death. Uh, The husband to be could actually have her executed. And here we read a story right in the beginning of Matthew's gospel, chapter 18, where Joseph has to come to terms with this. In verse 18, it says, now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother, Mary, had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Uh, Joseph was going to quietly dismiss her. He wasn't going to have her executed, which he was in his right to have done. Mary, why do I read this story? When Mary, when the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary and said, you will be the mother of the Lord, and she gave her wholehearted surrendered yes to God, she would have known because she would have understood the culture of what, how that was going to be seen in the village, in the place where she lived the gossip, the ridicule, the people talking behind her back, the people being angry with her, the shame that she would have expressed, the disgrace that she would have and her family would have experienced because of what she'd done, even the shame uh, that, that Joseph would have had. She knew all of that and yet she resolved within herself to go through. She resolved within herself, this is what I must do. Now, in Luke's gospel, it says once Mary had, the angel had appeared to Mary, what did she do? She headed off to see her relative Elizabeth, who was older, and the scriptures say was beyond ability to have children. And yet she had, Elizabeth had found herself pregnant. And so she goes off to the very first thing she does. She goes off to see uh, Elizabeth. And when she, when she's met by Elizabeth, God has already spoken to Elizabeth and revealed into into Elizabeth's heart the fact that Mary is carrying the Saviour. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the in the hill country, where she entered the house where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. 
And blessed is she who believed that there would be fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And so the angel Gabriel's come to Mary. The angel Gabriel has given her this news, which is going to cause her to be ridiculed, going to put her in a tough spot. The very first thing she does is she goes to see her a relative that, that God has spoken to her about. And the relative, Elizabeth, immediately affirms her, immediately explains to her in the Holy Spirit, that you are the mother of my Lord and you have come. How blessed am I that you come to my house. The very first thing that Mary looks for is to celebrate and naturally to draw strength from this woman who God confirms again, this is what's happening. It's almost like through Elizabeth, God is confirming to Mary again, this, is, this will be the mother, the Messiah. So often in our life, when we're faced with difficult circumstances, we need the strength of someone else who can speak the word of God to us. And Elizabeth speaks to Mary and says, this is what the Lord is doing. This is what God is saying to you. How blessed are you? Then what's Mary's response? And we read in Luke chapter 1, verse 46, is Mary begins to praise God. And she says, and Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour, for he has overlooked with uh, he, was, he has looked with favour on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed for the mighty one has done great things for me and holy is his name. And Mary goes on. And she continues to declare the beauty, the wonder, the praise of God. If there's two things we can learn from Mary is when God places something within our heart that we're meant to do, and He does. He might be calling you to be a parent. He might be calling you right now to be retired. He might be calling you, if you're elderly, to be still. He might be calling you, if you're in the middle of work, to do something else. If you're a student, to, to act in a certain When God puts something in our heart that He wants us to do, there's a couple of things we can learn from the life of Mary. Is number one, we can look for someone to affirm, to be, give us strength, in our life exactly in the place where, they are, where we are. The second thing we can learn from Mary is that is to have the grace to be able to come before God and to begin to worship God in the midst of what God has asked us to do. Because often when he went, I shouldn't say often, but almost in every case, when God asks us to do something, there's a level of growth, of challenge, of coming to a new understanding in a new place. And we'll need the presence of God within us. And so where does the presence of God dwell? the presence of God dwells in our prayer and in our worship of God and Mary begins to worship. So right now, if you're facing struggle, if you're facing difficulty, if you're facing hardship, if there's something that's breaking your heart right now, worship God. Worship God. Just begin to tell God in your own words, just in your own words that God, will you, God, you are, you are the creator of all things. God, you know me through and through. You know my future, you know my past, you know my circumstances, you know everything. And I praise you and I worship you, I honour you, I bless you, God, because you look down upon me and you love me enough to give me direction and to give me focus and to give me a place where I'm meant to be at, in this season, at this moment in my life. Lord, you call me to be this kind of person. And Lord, I ask that you would be with me as I respond to what you're asking me to do and that you would give me the strength in order that I can have strength to fulfill what you are asking of me because all things come from you. Father, I thank you. I praise you and adore you that you are with me. And Lord God, I just pray for every person listening right now that as they pray prayers like this, that their hearts would be strengthened, that they would draw strength from Mary as our model, our model of someone who heard your words, surrendered totally and had the strength to see it through. Father, I ask this in the mighty name of Jesus, through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all, everybody. Don't forget to go and register for the women's event. Men, I'm sure you know men, women in your life that you could register as well. Uh, God bless you. I pray that you have a blessed day and I pray that you would press into the strength of God and be strong yourself. Until we see you next time, don't forget, wherever you are, God is never far from you.